Hello guys and thank you for joining me for this tutorial. My name is Valentine and this time we're gonna have a look on how to create a post request with Postman. And in order to do that let's first understand what exactly is the problem that we're trying to solve and where exactly does Postman fit in and what it is. So generally when you're on a website and you have something like a registration form or any, any kind of forms uh, where you're putting in some information that form, of course, is rendered with HTML and you need a piece of information in order to get everything up and running. Now, the moment you click that submit button, usually what a browser does is to create a post request. And that post request contains all the information that you filled in in that form and sends it to the server. So, more or less you can say that it looks like something like this. You have your registration form and then the user submits that form with a post request to the server and the server gets this information and does something. Now, usually a post request is used to add some information to the server. So for example, you fill in a registration form and then somewhere in the server database, there's a new registration with your name. Then the server may get back to you and say, thank you for registration or everything is okay. All the information that you gave is fine. Now, the problem occurs in the moment that you only have the server and you do not have a client in order to test that specific functionality. And as you probably know, in the browser it's pretty easy to create a GET request. So every time you type in something like facebook.com or google.com, that's a GET request. But in order to, get to create a POST request with a browser, that's a bit more complicated because you either need to create that registration form for Scratch to include all the fields that the server requires, or for more modern APIs where you're working with JSON, things get even more complicated. So the question is, what are your options to actually create a post request for testing purposes, for example? One possibility that a lot of power users can do is actually to use the terminal and one utility that it's being used a lot to create such request is curl and this can be very powerful because if you're working a lot with a terminal you will have the control of everything that you're doing now the problem with curl is that things can get complicated and in order to change things you need to be very good with the terminal to put it that way and this may scare a lot of people and for that reason we're gonna have a look into something else and that's something else is of course Postman as I mentioned previously. Now if you're totally new to Postman, I will link right here above a beginner's tutorial to Postman to get you up and started with everything that you need to know. But for now I'll just assume that you have Postman installed locally on your machine as an application not as a Chrome plugin and that you can get started right away. Now the first thing you need to do in Postman in order to create a post request is to go here where you can select the HTTP method that is being used and select post. Now, of course, the second thing that you need to do is to type in the address where you want this request to go. And for this example, we are gonna use an online web service that takes post requests from us and then as a response, it will sort of a mirror what we already have sent in order just to test that everything is working fine. So let's see how this goes. The server that I'm mentioning is httpbin.org and the endpoint that we are going to use is post. So type httpbin.org slash post and this will know how to interpret a post request that we sent. Now the second thing that it's very important to notice is this body tab here. So every time I'm inside post I have the possibility of doing something here with the body but when I switch the HTTP method to get, for example, this body is grayed out. So I need to make sure that I'm inside post. And for that matter, this works for put as well or for patch. But going back to post, you make sure that you select a post request and then you click body. And then you have the possibility of filling in that information and creating a post request. Okay, so let's see what exactly is a post request and how we can do it. In the previous example, and this is the case, the past where you had a lot of forms where you click a button and then a request is being sent. 
that you need to use form data. And this is selected by default here right below body form data. And what this allows you to do is to input keys and values. So for example, in the previous form, we had something like, let's say name, and that's the key. And then we say John. And then we have email and we can say, John Doe at example.com. So let's just submit this request and see how it goes and how the response looks like. Now, right here below, I can see the response from the server. And actually, this doesn't change anything. This, this is just a server. This is just a web service that is for testing purposes just to see how things work. And in this case, the servers recognized that we have sent a post request and that we have used this form data because you will see here right below form it will say email and name which means it recognized that the email that we sent is john.doe at example.com and name is John Doe. The second option that you have here is this URL encoded version of this form data. And what it what this does is to basically URL encode everything that you are sending. Now you notice that when you switch between form data and form encoded, uh, the data that we input it here basically disappears. So I'm gonna click here on bulk edit, and this will change the way the editor looks like. I will be able to select everything, switch the mode bat back, go here paste this and then I'll have the same information available here. So let's submit this as well. And then you're probably wondering, well, nothing has changed. Not really. Something has changed. Now the server is instructed by this content type you see here below that this is a form that it's URL encoded and it knows to decode it. And this is why you see it here properly. If we go back to form data, you'll see here that the way the form data looks is different. So it's a multi-part form data. So technically there's a difference between them, but because the server is being able to interpret both of them, this works without any problems. Now, if you want to get a bit more technical and see behind the scene what exactly is happening. So for example, in this case, you can just click here below send this code and in case it's not already selected you select here HTTP and then you will see the raw message like how it will be sent out. So you have here the method that will be sent so the HTTP method in this case will be post then you have the host then you have the content type and these are all headers and then this is the actual post body so this is what makes a post request a post request it actually contains a body this is the body that we configured here and you will see that the information that we send out is a bit different from how it looks here in the editor so in case you're a bit curious on how things work make sure you check this snippets panel here for each and every request that you create and maybe you'll find some interesting things now going back to our example as i previously said a lot of the times nowadays you will probably still interact with form and form data but what's actually the, the shift that is going on is with a lot of single page applications and a lot of javascript in the front end and you no longer send forms but you actually send with javascript http request and when you're using javascript most of the time you're gonna send a json payload with that so the next step for me, it would be to say, it would be to show you the same thing, the same two values that we're sending, but as a JSON payload. And in order to do that, we are going to go to this raw radio button. And now we can see here that the editor has changed completely. Now there are no forms anymore. We can type in anything you want. Now, if we just type in anything you want, probably the server won't understand what we exactly are typing. And in our case, because we want to send a JSON body with this request, we need to do a couple of things. So first, 
as a recap, we are inside body and we now select it raw. And the moment we do that, we have even more options that we can select. And by default is text selected here. But once I click this select box, I'll be given a lot of more options. And in our case, I'm going to select JSON. And this, for, and this doesn't change a lot of the things, but you will see a bit later why this is important. So let's try here to create a JSON payload. And our JSON payload will look more or less like what we already have here. So what we got as a response from the previous request, this is actual JSON. And I'm not going to go into the details of JSON itself, but you can see that Postman recognizes that na email is a key, that the name is a key, and these are the values. And if I switch this off, it will look like normal text. And it's important to have JSON selected if you're sending JSON because Postman needs to understand, set the proper headers to what's going on. And even more, if you make any mistakes inside here, so for example, I deleted this quote, I deleted this double quote, you will get here an error like a bad string. And this will give you an idea that something is not right with your payload. Now let's submit this as well and see if there's any difference. And indeed there is some difference. Now, the raw data that we submitted, if you look again at the code here, looks like this. So this is the body. This is actually what happened with our post request. And this is exactly what the server got here as well, because you will see here data, this is the data in a not so nice format. But again, the server managed to understand what we've sent. And if you look here right below JSON, we'll see that the email is John Doe at example.com and name is John Doe. And everything is possible with Postman as you can, as you saw in a couple of seconds, you can easily craft a post request either as a form data or as a raw request with JSON. Of course, you can select here any other types. So you can just send, of course, text plain, or you can send XML or anything else. There's absolutely no problem. This raw functionality is really powerful. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to explain you, and that's quite important, if, especially if you want to automate and do things more dynamically with Postman. And actually, Postman is quite powerful in automating your entire API test suite. A small example for this is that Postman allows you to make some things dynamically. And in order to make things dynamically, we need to work with variables. And one of the things that you can do, for example, in a pre-request script, and I'm gonna use here something like set global variable. And this is simple JavaScript code. And we can say here, name and inside here we can set a value now in this case i'm gonna just simply set foo but this because but because this is javascript you can put here anything you like as a string so it's totally up to you i'm not gonna get into that there are other tutorials that i did that explain more on how to write scripts and tests and stuff like that and also in my online course i have entire sections on writing tests and scripts but just the basic usage you can set here a global variable called name with a specific value. And then you have, this is very powerful. Now we can just go inside here, inside name, replace John Doe with double curly brackets and say name. Okay, so at first this looks a bit weird, but let's see exactly what's happening. When the request was submitted, Postman replaced this with the variable foo that we defined previously. So we had this variable defined here, either in the pre-request script, it really doesn't matter. You'll be able to see it in the global variables right here. And this is a way on how you can combine things inside your request and make them dynamically with Postman.
Okay guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something new and this tutorial was helpful to you. If this is the case, please give this video a thumbs up, write a comment below, tell me if it worked for you and if you have any other questions, just get in touch with me and tell me what else you would like to learn about Postman API testing and anything else. Just let me know and see you next time at another tutorial. Bye bye.